Okay, at first glance, I'm sure you're blown away at the quality of my drawing of a spinner. Um, it is what it is. So this, um, we're just going to do a problem that kind of involves the fundamental counting principle and some classical probability here. So um, this would be if you are, oh, you know what I didn't, I didn't draw the little die for you. Hold on. There we go. Now it's definitely quality. So now we have a multiple event experiment going on. We are spinning this spinner, which I, I didn't draw the little arrow spinner. I guess I could do that too. All right, well, now we're just wasting time. So you're going to spin the spinner like you're playing a game, and then you're going to roll a die. And um, I don't know, it might be some bizarre game. So we, I've got two examples here. What's the probability that you roll a five, and then you land on green when you flip the uh, spinner? So I've got to use the fundamental counting principle here because every time we know that we do probability, we always have to have a fraction and our denominators are total possible outcomes. So I need to look at the outcomes for both events. The first event, there are four possible outcomes. There are four colors that it can land on when I spin that spinner. The second event, there are six possible outcomes. So the fundamental counting principle says if you want the total possible outcomes and you're selecting or you're, you're having one from each event, you multiply those possibles together. So that tells us there's 24 possible things that can happen, possible combinations. Now I want, I need to know how many of those involve rolling a five and landing on green. So you do the same concept there. Um, there's only one way to roll a five. And there's only one green on the spinner. So I multiply those options together just like I did the denominator. One way to get a five, one way to land on green, one times one is one. One divided by 24, do that in your calculator, and you get, we can just do three decimal places here, 0 0.042, because I get 4166, and that bumps it up to 042. So that's the answer to part A, rolling a five and landing on green. So now B, let's go to... Um, B, rolling a number less than 3. Okay, now, uh, first of all, my denominator is the same. There's still 24 total possible outcomes. But now I have two possible outcomes on the first event. Rolling a number less than 3 includes the numbers 1 and 2. 3 is not less than 3. So rolling a number less than 3, there are two ways I can do that. I can roll a 1 or a 2, so there's two of those. Landing on yellow or red. Now there's two possible ways to make that happen. Yeah, and on yellow or land on red. So there are four different scenarios where I could roll a number less than three and spin the spinner and have it land on yellow or red. Out of 24 possible outcomes, and so I get, as a final answer, I got a scoot so I got room to write it, 0 0.1 one six seven that's a zero I came up with. all right let's look at another type of problem that involves the fundamental counting principle so um, if you have to come up with a security password that might have some rules involved you know some of them do so this one in order to come up with your security password you have to choose a letter of the alphabet and then four numbers you can repeat the numbers and so um, I've got to do a couple things. Oh, I didn't write some pro I didn't type out some problems here. Well, I'll do them now, okay? So I want to know, let's say I want to crack somebody's password. What's the probability that I can crack that password in one try? So this will help you understand how secure that password is. Well, if I'm going to create a probability, I need to make a fraction. The denominator of my fraction is always what are the total possible outcomes or how many total possible passwords are there. And that's what we've got to figure out here. So first thing I need to do is put how many total things there are up here. There's 26 letters in the alphabet. Digits. You might think the number's 1 through 9, and you might say there's 9 of them, but don't forget 0 is a digit. 0 through 9 is 10 digits. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's 10 of those, um, and you can repeat them. You can have the same number down twice. So each one of these spots in the password, you have 10 choices for digits. 
fundamental counting principle tells us the total possible outcomes. We multiply those together. So I have 260,000 passwords available. That's the denominator down here of my fraction. Only one of those is the correct password. So there's only one correct thing. There's only one way you can get that password in one try. And that's if you select that one correct password. So 1 divided by 260,000. Now this is interesting. In your calculator, in fact, I suggest you do that in your calculator, even though you're just watching a video and you're like, yeah, 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 tell me the answer. This is important because you're going to see something that, that will happen to you and you've got to know what it means. When I do 1 divided by 260,000 in my calculator, I get this. 3.846153, okay? And you might write that down, and I have had students do that in the past. A couple things wrong. First of all, You've got to know something's wrong because you know 1 divided by 260,000 is a tiny, tiny little number. It's not going to give you 3. The other thing that should alert you is you know from reading earlier on in the chapter, um, you read about the range of probabilities rule. And that tells you probability has to be between 0 and 1. You can never have a probability greater than 1. So when you see that, it's not that you divided wrong. It's that you need to look at your calculator display. And so if I go back to my calculator and I scroll to the end of this row of numbers, I see the letter E and then a minus 6. Now, if this is a test that you're giving me free response and your, your midterm next week or in Module 3, you will have to do some free response. Um, you can't give me that and get full credit because that's not a number. 3.84, blah, 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 E minus 6. What that means is they're telling you this in scientific notation, and the E stands for exponent. And so your exponent that goes with 10 in scientific notation is negative 6. So this is the number 3.85, if I round it two places, times 10 to the negative 6. That's an acceptable answer. That's scientific notation. Or you can go ahead and convert that to a standard number. The 6 tells you how many places to move your decimal point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Anytime you have an open little gap here, you have to fill in zeros. So point oh 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 three eight five. That's the probability of being able to guess somebody's password in one try.